everyone, Fran and Kevin with Ahuga, and today Hello. we are here with a Peter Brown. And I was I first heard of Peter Brown when I was at the Mental Health uh, Foundation Gala and saw him in a video clip that they were yeah. doing with um, one of the, the the companies that you work with, uh, yeah. Direction One Eighty, yeah. which was a phenomenal video. I was like, Oh my God, who is that guy? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we need to meet him. He did do a really good job. Oh, that yeah. was a beautiful video. Yeah, it was yeah. a beautiful. And Kevin had known him before. Yeah, I've known Peter for, it's got to be about three years now. And I actually was sent to Peter whenever I was having a tough go. And somebody knew that he'd be able to help me. So we had a little connection there where he, uh, he kind of gave me guidance whenever I came out of rehab. And I was trying to get myself uh, in a better place. And Peter's been instrumental to my recovery so I'm super excited to have him speak with us tonight and, and you know happy that uh, he'd do that for us so well, thank so you uh, thank, thank you for you. being here yes. yeah. yeah we're gonna yeah. hand it over and let you share excited for the opportunity yeah actually uh, Kevin it's kind of funny because I, I, I didn't realize the connection and then yep. all of a sudden, I just clicked in my head, and I'm like, wait a minute. This yeah. is the same guy that was in the <laughs> NCC with me. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I was going to school trying to be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take over for one yeah. sec, but I was going to school trying to figure out what was wrong with me in psychology, <laughs> and Peter was actually doing, uh, he was doing, you were becoming so, a counselor. Social services. Social program. services, yeah. and I was debating on taking the same program, so it was awesome. We... We connected on different levels what we wanted to do, help others, and what we had been through some stuff. So, it's with, funny how things come full circle, eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Much so. yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. So, you uh, put the connection together after I uh, yeah. reached out to you. Yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely. Yeah. No, it was, uh, um, uh, yeah, it didn't come to me at all. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, wait a minute. And I got all excited. <laughs> then, right? I was like, yeah. Um, I meet I meet a lot of people through through uh, my work and through um, you know going to school. I went back to school at uh, what was I forty four or something. Went back yeah. to school and did social services program and uh, with an SCC. And the only thing I graduated prior to that was the school of hard knocks. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So we were just talking about before. Uh, before the cameras turned on, they were talking about uh, the trip that I had made last weekend. Um, I was up in Ottawa and Kingston, Ontario. Uh, we went up for some meetings with uh, CSC, Correctional Services of Canada, and um, they actually give us a tour of the uh, uh, segregation unit, which is they call it now the SIU. Um, they call it, they changed the name of it once they said that segregation was inhumane. Um, so they just changed that, right? There's a, a big thing about that. So they had to have, um, if a person was incarcerated now, they had to have uh, a minimum of four hours outside of their cell and two of those hours had to be with meaningful human contact. Oh, okay. So they're scrambling because there's a lot of watchdogs now, uh, groups that are watching and saying, what's going on? This is a law. You know what are you doing about this and wow. so they reached out to um, you know the organization that I'm with the seven step society of Canada which is a self-help uh, and nonprofit for people uh, that have been in conflict with the law mm -hmm. um, and actually our target group uh, you know when seven steps started back in the 50s was was the recidivist the person that keeps going in and keeps going in and has got that um, way of thinking, you know, mm -hmm. it's got that belief system mm -hmm. that's ingrained, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, the guys that, and the women that, that uh, society throws away. Oh. That's who we want, mm -hmm. right? That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the people that we focus on. Right. Right. Um, so, so, yeah, so it only makes sense that we went into Millhaven mm -hmm. Maximum Security, right? It's <laughs> yeah. probably one of the uh, hardest prisons in Canada. Really? And, yeah, and uh, we went through the segregation. Yeah, the Tragically Hip wrote a song about it. The, the I escape. Yeah, that. yeah, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the prison, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I went through there. And it's kind of funny because I, I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what feelings I was going to feel. And I say that because, you know, I did a lot of time. I, I uh, 
you know, from the age of 18, I was, I was locked up in a federal prison. Um, you know, I did, I, I was sentenced to about 16 years. I did about 12 of that inside and uh, four of that was in a maximum security. Mm. So I was I was on a, a, a pretty crooked road, right? Wow. I, I was on that. Path. Yeah, it was yeah. a very hard path. Mm. Um, you know, and so when I was going back inside for for the tour, mm -hmm. I was like, man, how's it, how's this going to affect me? You mm. know, because yeah. there's a lot of trauma, a lot of, and a lot of yeah. different yeah. things. You know, and, and it wasn't all trauma, but it was like you know, there was good memories, mm -hmm. bad memories, everything in between. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really didn't know how I was going to feel about it. So, but when I walked in. It's the weirdest thing, but I had a comfortable feeling. Oh, wow. Nice. Something familiar. Right? Ah, yeah. Wow, and, yeah. I, and I was not that? expecting it. Wow. Right? I, 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 me yeah. either. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I was just like, you know? And I'm seeing the guys, like, you know, coming into their cells and in the different uh, areas and. And I'm just like, you know, looking to see if I know anybody, you know. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is he home? Is he home? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, That's so and so. Uh, <laughs> so, so, but it just goes to show you how strong, you know, the, the human brain is, you know, yeah. when we make connections, you know, in our brain and, um, it, 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 you know, those are always there, mm -hmm. you know, they're always there. No matter how far we put those memories back, no matter how we try to ignore them, when something or certain things arise in our life, that connection becomes mm, strong and powerful happen. again, right? Wow. And um, so anyway, so yeah, so I was in there and we were talking about different programs that we were doing, uh, that we had, that we offer now for uh, people that are inside and outside of prison, mm -hmm. um, that have, you know, been in prison. And so we, uh, you know, we've got five different programs now that we're offering and, and um, that's my position on a national organization is, is program, uh, national program coordinator. So yeah, so I, I'm uh, yeah, and then we were meeting with some of the heads of CSC. We even actually the commissioner was there chatting with us for a little while, which is like the top person of uh, mm -hmm. Correctional Services of Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, yeah, so these are the things that have led into my life um, mm -hmm. yeah. since since I turned it around. Um, like I said earlier, like the time that I spent in prison, I became um, you know I started using drugs and stuff at the age of thirteen with my old man. Um, he was the first one that I ever used drugs with. Really? Yeah, yeah. So he was in and out of prison. Um, and he was violent and, you know, he was a big drinker and um, sold drugs. And, you know, so I was like brought up watching that stuff, you know. And, and I was, and I, I thought it was cool. You know, I did. When I was a kid, I'm like, yeah, my dad's hard, you know. And, and I'd be like, I was talking about gangs and stuff with my yeah, friends. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. don't mess with my dad. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the, the thing was, is I never seen the turmoil on the inside, you know, right, all I seen was the money mm -hmm. and seen, you know, the, the, the respect and fear that he had around him at all times, right? Because mm -hmm. he demanded that you either respected him or you feared him. There was no in between mm -hmm. or you just stayed away from him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and I wanted that, you know, when I was a kid, I'm like, yeah, man, what's wrong with that? Look, mm -hmm. right, he's got it all, right? Mm -hmm. And then you see the videos and the movies and all this kind of stuff. Right. Um, but I didn't see the turmoil, you know, I didn't see that pain and that, you know, the, the stuff that he was going through, uh, being so young watching that, I, I would have never, ever recognized that. No. Um, so he died when I was 19 and I was already in prison at that point. Oh, wow. wow. Um, so I, my, my drug, he was always trying to use reverse psychology on me and he'd be like passing joints and I'd be like, no, no, and I was like 13, right? And I'm like, no, 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 I don't do that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one day I said, yes. And that was the one and only time that he ever did drugs with me. It was my first time using, and it was with him, and he never gave, he never offered me again. Wow. Oh, really? Reverse, but I didn't realize any of this, you know, until later, but that reverse psychology backfired. Yeah. And he, you know, but he never told me, but I, so I didn't know, right? Mm. And, uh, mm. but he drank with me, you know, like as I got older, mm. a teenager, you know, 16, 17, 18, and I, um, yeah. but, but. My addiction, I, you know, I look at myself that I know uh, I have uh, obsessive compulsiveness, mm -hmm. right? And my obsessive compulsiveness can come out on anything, yeah. you know? And, and, and I didn't know anything about any of this stuff, but I remember the first time when he used me, I remember thinking, I can get comfortable in any position. 
I'm like, I could stand on my head, man. I'm high. I could stand on my head. I'd be comfortable, right? And I didn't realize until just a few years ago that it had nothing to do with physical. It was mental. Yeah. Right? It was all mental, right? And, um, you know, I, had, I found a coping skill. I found an escape because I didn't have to deal with the fear of being around him because it was always like walking on eggshells around him. Mm. Always. The threat of violence was always there. Right? Yeah. And um, so when I found that comfort, it was just like, ooh, I want more. And it just snowballed, kept yeah. going. I got into more and more drugs, you know, through my teenage years. Then I started, uh, I was living with my mother here in Nova Scotia. My father uh, lived in Newfoundland or Toronto. Okay. And um, I started getting into breaking enters with the boys, yeah. right? Okay. You know, yes. we were yeah. feeding the go get drunk and go get high. And anyway, 18, end up in prison, six breaking enters and a robbery. Mm. Three and a half years. Wow. Um, so at 19, I ended up in maximum security, Atlantic Institution, or a lot of people know it as Renews. Mm. Uh, I was 19 years old, that was in 93. And, uh, you know, I'm a kid, really, 19, mm. you know? Okay. So I'm, I'm just like, I'm like a sponge. I'm mm. absorbed. The guys that I'm around are like bank robbers and murderers. And that's, you know, you're in a mass security. Everybody's violent, mm. you know, like this is the people. And um, I just grabbed on. I, I still, at that point, wanted to be the gangster. I still wanted to be, the, you know, the top dog, all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, when I got out, after 25 months of being in prison the first time, I was so overwhelmed because that belief system that is forced upon you. Never, because if you don't live by that belief system, you become a target. You become a victim. Oh, okay. So you have to absorb the belief system. There. Yeah. The problem is that the belief system doesn't fit out here. Okay. It's got, it doesn't fit, okay. right? There's yeah. a belief system. system to be in jail. Like you have to, right? Like okay. everybody, you don't trust anybody. Oh, um, yeah. You know, yeah. everybody's uh -huh. out to get you. Yeah. Uh, the system is the worst thing in the world because everything you say or do is used against you, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, you know, whether it's in the courts or whether it's parole officers right. or, you know, okay. or correctional officers, yeah. everything you do and say is written down and used against you later on. So, so you, you start to build this belief system mm, that you can't trust sense. anybody, okay. you don't have nothing to do with the system, no matter where the system is a part of. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're around the worst crooks out there, so, yeah. you know, you got to watch everything, then you're around the most violent people out there, yeah. so you got to be careful what you say, what you do, how you look, you know, what you, oh, yeah. everything. Yeah. And, um, yeah. You know, you uh, can't get close to people. Really. You can't, right? I mean, you, you know? do. You you get a really close knit of like Bonds, a click, they call it, right? Like you know, maybe three, four, yeah. five guys. Yeah. But that's survival more than anything, right? Yeah. Right? Because, because if you're yeah. alone, you're a target. You, a you you're target. a target, right? <laughs> you know, and especially if you're not living by the belief system, right? Oh, yeah. uh, because then you're a rat, and you're no good. You're right. you know whatever, right? Mm. Yep. And. Um, so yeah, so uh, and I absorbed it. Like I said, I wanted to be the gangster. I come out in '94, and I was only out six months. I was still completing that three and a half years, and um, I picked up two bank robberies. So I'm 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 charged with two bank robberies in Dartmouth. Um, it was all over the news mm -hmm. and all that stuff. God love my parents. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they went. To, I mean, like I can't even imagine having a kid. <laughs> Like I was, like, you wow. know, my mom, my stepdad, like, you know, they, the, yeah. the stuff that they went Peter's through. Peter's on the news again. Oh, <laughs> you know, you imagine seeing a kid, you know, on the news, like, you know, right, for so robbing yeah. banks yeah. and violent yeah. crimes. And, oh. Anyway, and and, uh, and that continued for years, right? Like, it was, um, you know, I ended up doing, like, it was eight years. Then I was only out for a couple months, and then I was a stolen car with a high-speed chase. Then I was out, like, out for eight months, and then I... Picked up another six years for more robberies, and you know what I mean. Yeah. So wow. it, it was, uh, it's a vicious yeah. Vicious yeah. And then and then I got out again. But as I was doing all this, my 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 substance use was getting worse oh, and worse okay. and worse. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it it became a point where I wasn't being a gangster anymore. I was supplying a habit, mm. you know. Okay. And I picked these habits up the hard drugs in prison. You know, which is yeah, crazy when people really think about it. Yeah. yeah, right? So, I mean, like, I'd never touched cocaine. Mm -hmm. um, I'd never touched IVs, you know, mm -hmm. needles, any of that stuff. And by the time I finished, I mean, like, I was covered in track marks. I was, you know, sitting in a segregation unit in a maximum security prison, and I'm covered in track marks. And I'm going, how the hell did this happen? Oh, wow. 
you know, where, what happened? What happened to my life, mm. you know? Yeah. And, and they're talking about giving me the dangerous offender, um, which is a life sentence. Oh my gosh. Um, so they, they have a completely separate trial for it and they go back through your whole life and say, mm -hmm. this guy's never going to change. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to keep committing violent mm -hmm. crimes. And, mm -hmm. um, so they had threatened me with that. And, um, you know, so I was, I was put in a place where I was like, you know, if I don't do something, I'm mm -hmm. going to either, the drugs are going to kill me, someone else is going to kill me, or I'm going to spend the rest of my life in jail. That, that's that's where mm. I was at that crossroads, and uh, it was only why well, I was almost about to say it was only luck that uh, that I didn't die out there, but um, there was a purpose. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There was a purpose, I like that. Yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I had I, I lost a child. You know, oh. I had a, I had a six year old little Did girl you? that died. Yeah, and, oh, and that's her that's her his son there. My brother overdosed and died. Oh, wow. I had a girlfriend. She overdosed and died, oh, wow. and all this happened like while I was mm. in active addiction, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and that might have been a good thing because I don't know if I would have been able to cope with that stuff if I wasn't using. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I kind of look at it like it all happened yeah, for a reason yeah. at those times, mm -hmm. yeah. but um, you know, after my brother died, um, you know, that was in 2013. Um, I was standing at his funeral. And I hadn't been in jail now for a few years. I, you know, got on the methadone program, and I was doing well. And I, and I had a job, you know, and I was holding down a job and holding down, a, you know, a, a roof over my head. And um, anyway, I came off the methadone and started slipping, and I was started using IV again. And my brother died, I overdosed and died. His body just couldn't take it anymore, mm. right? Wow. And um, Anyway, Trevor was his name. So, so I'm at his funeral, and I'm standing there, and I look around, and this moment of clarity I had, I looked around the room, and I went, I can't do this to my family, mm -hmm. you know? Because what I was feeling, I was so, you know, I was destroyed, right? He was my little, course. you know, one yeah, of my course, baby yeah. brothers. And, and I was destroyed, and I'm like, I can't do this to them. Mm -hmm. And so I... I, uh, I I start I come out of the closet and start telling all my family that I was using again, okay. and, and uh, I went into detox in March of 2014, and I was just going in to get control back, mm -hmm. get myself under control again, yeah. and uh, actually Narcotics Anonymous came in and did a presentation, and when they did, I can't tell you what they said, no. but something clicked, oh, wow. and and I realized. What my mother had been saying to me for 20 years <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that's you can't use nothing Kate you just understand that. you can't nothing. use nothing it don't work for you right and she was telling me that for 20 years yeah. right? um, so anyway um, yeah so at that point I realized that I was allergic to substances right I break out in handcuffs yeah. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, just, yeah. That's just the way. That's that. just the way just, it works for me. Oh, right? yeah, so, that's, yeah. yeah. When so, the analogy that is. Right. <laughs> and it happens every time. Doesn't yeah. matter what it is. It always takes you down to that same road. <laughs> um, you know, and and that road is what I'm talking about. Is that connection in our brain that I started talking about in the beginning, and that's, you know, we create these trails in our life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, you know, and I always like to use the analogy, it's like, if you left your house every day and you walked the same tra trail through the woods, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what happens with that trail? It becomes nice and clear, you got all the rocks <coughs> put back, all the branches are broke mm -hmm. back, like that trail, you could walk that trail in the dark with your eyes closed, you know, if you walked it for 10, 20 years, mm -hmm. yeah. you can walk that trail and you know exactly where to step, where everything is, how to get through that and all of a sudden, somebody says, you can't walk that trail no more. you got to take a new trail. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Right? You're getting slapped in the faces with branches. Yes. You're tripping over rocks. You're mm -hmm. finding holes in the ground. Yeah. It's the same thing in life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and what happens is, is that a lot of people will start walking this new trail, and they're, they're, getting, you know, they're getting beat up. Mm. Right? They're getting beat up because they just don't know the trail. Yeah. And they're looking all over, and they're going, man, that trail looks pretty good. And it only takes that one moment 
to forget where that trail ends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's so, so easy true. to step back over yeah. on that trail, right? So and those connections in our brain, when I step back over on that trail, like I said in the beginning, about stepping into that maximum security, yeah. I feel comfortable. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I don't. But if I forget what those consequences are. Yeah. I'm, I'm done. Mm. I'm finished. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Daily Forget about that daily allergy. reminder, right? Mm. Constant, right? Mm. Constant. So after uh, after I got clean, I started to, uh, you know, like everybody who stops using drugs in the beginning, everybody wants to be a counselor. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, it's like clock. Oh, yeah. I, I deal with people that are getting into recovery and stuff all the time. And, yeah. and within like a month, man, I, I'm going to do counseling. I want to be a drug counselor. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, you can do whatever you put your mind to. Yeah. Right? That's all you But it's a lot of work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I'm going to get sick. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. One month, I was like, oh. yeah. yeah. But that's, yeah, the, way it same, huh? that's yeah. the way it works, right? Yeah. And uh, so, anyway, I had that thought. And, and I said, well, you know, I should get some school behind my belt. I went and applied to. Uh, um, I forget what the name of the college was. It was out in, in Sackville at the time. They changed the name of it. Success, success. Yes, success. Success, yeah. They wouldn't let me in. Oh! Because they had a criminal record. They wouldn't oh. let me do the counseling course. Really? Wouldn't oh. even let me through. The teacher wouldn't even talk to me. Wow. And I was like blown away. I'm like, man, what? Like, wow. you know, I'm, I got all this to Very offer. Much, yes. I got so much to offer, right? Wow. And uh, so anyway, so after that happened, I kind of gave up on it. And uh, I went back doing construction. For about a year and then I got laid off and I said you know what I'm going to try this again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I went to NSCC but I learned from, <coughs> <coughs> excuse learned me I learned knowledge. from the first time <laughs> yeah so this time I asked to speak to the teacher before I told anybody anything <laughs> and uh, so I went in and spoke to the teacher and I told him my story so he's like hold on a minute and he goes and gets the head of the social services department the mm -hmm. top one this guy's got a story for you, right? <laughs> nice. And uh, anyway, I, I put in the application two weeks later. I get in. Nice. And yes. uh, now they don't. Now you don't have to have a clean record to get into the program because I. Uh, Did you set a precedent? Yeah. Did, Did you? you? Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Good for, yeah. Good for And they utilized me because Scott was yeah. the one. One of my teachers was the one that introduced us. Exactly. Wow. And they, through my whole two years, like I used to bring in speakers and I used to, you know, be do all kinds of stuff, meet wow. with people, and, yeah. and uh, they. Actually hired me on um, at the end of my term, at the end of my course, uh, to uh, be a peer support worker nice. with people coming from provincial prisons into the uh, into the NSCCs, and they called it the Limitless Program. Nice. And uh, so yeah, so that really snowballed too. That's that was great. Though. Yeah, fantastic yeah. and good. So, like kudos to NSCC for right. Yeah. 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 yeah, they even gave me an award. Well, well, me too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, it was uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it was a really great experience, and, and uh, you know, it was. I never graduated high school. Nothing, you know. The, the only thing I ever graduated before that was school of hard knocks, right? right? right. You have yeah. that so now I got a certificate. For you. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, for so, you. Yeah. Um, and actually, it was a lot easier than what I thought. I, like mm. it was a tough program, mm -hmm. but but school isn't as hard as what I thought. Uh, as what I remember it being. Just your mindset maybe. there, maybe. Yeah, right. maybe. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if I spent as much time doing my work as what I did trying to get at it, <laughs> I'd have been a scholar. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> But anyway, they, uh, so all the kids out there learn from right? me. Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I went to, and then I started working at Direction 180, mm -hmm. um, which is an opiate assisted treatment program, uh, more commonly known as a methadone clinic. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, I started working with uh, actually one of, the, uh, one of the doctors that I worked with was actually my doctor when I was on methadone. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. So now I work side by side with them. So nice. I'm a case manager there. Wow. And, uh, that's full sort of that is that's, really that's, cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, he's also in, in recovery himself. So, you know, we sit down and we chat openly about nice. our recoveries and stuff. Nice. Right. And it's uh, like direct 180. We have several people there that are in recovery. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, it's so nice to be in an environment like that because, we all understand. Mm. Yeah. You know? That's huge. It's, 
massive, yeah, yeah, right? We all there. understand. Yeah. And it's like, you know, if I'm having a hard day or struggling mm -hmm. with something, they're just like, it's all right. It's good, yeah. man. We know. Got, so. got you. you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and, and, and then we, I do the same in return. Nice. And then, yeah. you know, you need to chat. Come on in. Let's go in and chat for a minute. You know, and we, you know, talking about spiritual principles and how we can apply yeah. different things in our lives to, you know, get yeah. back on track and focus on helping others. Nice. Um, so, yeah, so we have a, a lot of different programs going there. Uh, the one that you guys had seen at the gala, mm -hmm. that yeah. was uh, a program that was uh, funded by the Mental Health Foundation to Direction 180. Mm -hmm. And um, um, our uh, program, uh, the, I keep wanting to say executive director, but they changed the name. So, <laughs> but anyway, uh -huh. We're with she's you. our ED, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so she, she came to me and she's like, look, you know, I get this funding for a program mm -hmm. um, and, and I want it to come from peer perspective. She said, I want it to come from lived experience, right? Yep. And she said, would you be willing to make it, uh, create it, and then facilitate it? Wow. And I'm like, well, hell yeah. Mm. I, you know, because that's, I, I love programs. I love facilitating. Mm -hmm. I love creating. Like, it just keeps me. So you do the full yeah. gamut. Yeah. And you started exactly. and finished. Wow. That's, yeah. That's, so, that's yeah. Huge. <laughs> so that's how I managed to get in all that because when they came to do uh, the program, I was the one who had uh, created it and facilitated wow, it. Wow. Uh, good for you. Wow. Yeah. But it looks so like it's fun. working, that program, is it? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. They love it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The clients love it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, what else? Well, we have the Mental Health Foundation. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mm-hmm. Um, as you can imagine, you know, and you're familiar with it. Well, I, you know, I walk out and it's like, you know, you can see the like, guy can immediately see when a guy comes out of jail, you know, or, or a woman mm-hmm. because we get both. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I can tell, I can tell by the way they hold themselves. I can mm-hmm. tell by the way they're looking around the room. I can tell by the way they, they say their words. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I'll be like, okay, so whoever's talking to me first, I'll let them clear it away and I'm just going like, what's up? Mm. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? Man? Come on for some more, right? Yeah, just yeah. to say, if you make it safe, for exactly, them. right? Yeah. And then I'll sit yeah. down, and I'll have a chat with them. I'm like, yeah, I've been there, you know. And I'll start mm-hmm. telling a little bit of my story, let them relate and mm-hmm. open up. You know what it's like when you first get out, and I'll tell them the story about one of the big stories I always use is the first time I got out of prison. I had done 25 months, and when you're in there, you've got no choices. You know what I mean? You're told when to eat, you're told when to sleep, mm-hmm. you're told when, you know, everything is laid out, you, you know, your laundry is, is thrown in a bag and they throw in the washer dryer, comes back, thrown on the range, like, you know, everything is done, mm-hmm. um, you don't have any choices, mm-hmm. you know, the most you might have a choice for when you go down to the meal is, is whether you want vegetables or not, you know, that yeah, kind of thing, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so, when I got out the first time, I remember going to the fridge at my mother's house. I wanted something to drink. I was thirsty. Mm-hmm. And, and I went to the fridge and I opened it up and it was full. The fridge was full. Well, you know, at that point, I did 25 months straight. I'm 20 years old. I had, uh, I'd never had to make that choice in over two years. Wow. Were you overwhelmed? Um, overwhelmed. I got wow. so overwhelmed by the colors and by, like, you know, the choices. And wow. I got I so that overwhelmed yeah. wow. that I ended up closing the fridge door, forgot what I was there for, and I had just to walk away from like, it. Yeah, yeah it I just get so much Just from trying to make a choice about getting something to drink. Yeah. And and I always tell the guys, I use that story all the mm, time as a tool, yeah. right? Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you can see them straighten right up <laughs> yeah. because they're like, they can oh, relate, yeah. they know. Wow. Eat, this guy knows, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, I use uh, I use the word translator a lot in my in my jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because uh, I feel like I'm a translator a lot of the time because I'm I'm either talking for people in active addiction or I'm talking for people coming out of prisons or even in prisons. Um, you know, and, and I'm talking for them. And and uh, and a lot of the time, professionals that are, um, don't have any lived experience, even though they really have a place. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, but they. There's a language barrier. Mm. There's a trust barrier. Mm-hmm. All right. So when you've got people um, that live peers, you know what I mean? People that have been there, got the T-shirt, and now they're you know giving back and working in the community, mm-hmm. working different organizations. We're able to create that trust very quickly, mm-hmm. yeah. and then we're able to show them pass the trust to other people to, mm-hmm. to open up doors, yeah. right? Yeah. And, um, you know, that's one of the things that we talk about a lot in, in the peer support training. Um, you know, if you, uh, if you don't see an example, be an example. Mm. Nice. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so, yeah, so we what utilize was, a lot of that stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, what was your, uh, your energy like? So I know what your energy is like now, but what was your... <laughs> energy like when you were inside because I'm thinking like <laughs> not the same so like yeah yeah no, I, I was, uh, coming with it, right? yeah, like, yeah. yeah I wasn't a very nice person I, I mean like um, my crimes were like your know, armed robberies um, I ran around with a gun I ran with gangs and bikers and you know all that kind of stuff and I, I uh, it was uh, it was a rough I mean you know the more time they spend in prison you you meet people from all the different communities on the outside because yeah. prison is a very small tight place I mean Spring Hill's got 500 renews has got um, three something 350 or something and so so these 350 they all go back to their own communities when they get out yeah but now I know them all right so so or maybe not all of them mm-hmm. but I've made some real big connections mm-hmm. so um, you know when you come out to the street these are the only people that accept you uh, because of that belief system, right? So yeah. it's so hard to get out and, and try and force that, you know, that round peg into a square hole, you know? Mm-hmm. It's so hard to, right? When the, when the round hole is right there, mm-hmm. or the square hole is right there, mm-hmm. you know? It's mm-hmm. like, um, so, you know, and, and then it's the only people you know, really. I mean, yeah. you go away for years, 
who else do you know? By the time you get back out, everybody's gone on with their lives. Oh, yeah. Like the first time when I went in, I was 18. By the time I got out 25 months later, all my friends were married and having kids oh, yes. and had jobs mm -hmm. and gone to school, universities and... And I'm sitting there going, I'm stuck back 18 years yeah, old, still wanting to party, mm -hmm. right? You know, like, they were in the yeah. yeah. And it's funny because we had, my buddy threw a party for me, invited all the old friends. Well, there was more fights because <laughs> the guys had all had beefs over, you know, two and a half years. Oh, Everybody kind of right. went their own way and did their own thing. We brought them all together, boy, there were rackets happening. <laughs> wow. Anyway, what a valuable party. lesson learned there, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, but yeah no I was I was definitely a totally different person I was you know like, mm. uh, you know I was a collector I did collections for people and I did like I was I was angry I was I was angry at myself though yep I was angry at my at my father Your father yeah. right and I was angry at me and I remember I remember saying because my father was abusive towards you know his women right his partners. Yeah. And I remember, like, all growing up, like, I hated him for it. Because he was beating up the women that I loved the most. Right. Yes. And, and, um, and I hated him for it. And I was like, I'll never be like him. I'll never be like him. And my tunnel vision, my focus, was on that one thing. Mm -hmm. As long as I didn't beat women, I wasn't like him. Ah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the problem was... was <laughs> but the, exactly the yeah. problem was is that I was so focused on that one point that I became my father in every other aspect oh. right but as long as I didn't do that I wasn't him wow and every other thing that fear that respect that you know that I was talking about earlier when I watched when I was growing up the money like all that stuff I had gone through so much of mm -hmm. that stuff and I became that person that was either feared or respected or stayed away from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I realized how lonely that stuff is. Yeah. You know, I realized, like, after getting into recovery and doing a lot of work on myself and, and you know, really taking a look at, at who Pete is and, and was. And, um, you know, I realized that. You know, the more further that I had gone into what I thought I wanted, the more that I hated myself yeah. because of the things that I was doing. That wasn't mm -hmm. who I really am at heart. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe we're all kind people at heart. I we just that. come to believe that we're not supposed to be. Yeah. We've come to believe that we're supposed to be a predator of some kind, that we're supposed to, you know, use and abuse the system and all these kinds of things. And, and depending on how you're, you're, you grow up, that can really be a huge aspect in your belief system. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and that's where it was with me. And, and the problem was is that I kept doing these things that I thought were okay. I had a recognition. This was only a couple of weeks ago. Well, maybe a couple of months now. But, <laughs> but I had this recognition. I had this big, you know, I call them light bulb moments mm -hmm. when, you know, you're yeah, cruising yeah, along yeah. and all of a sudden you have, whoa. <laughs> Yeah. Is that what life, what, where did that come from? You know, and I've been looking at this all wrong for 40 years, right? Yeah. Um, so anyway. It's funny. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just, right? We yeah. have right? Everybody does, you know, the light bulb moments, I call yeah. it. And, and uh, anyway, so I had this one uh, a couple of months ago. Now, when I was in active addiction and I was out there doing criminal activity, I would be, I, I, I like, pride of myself in being the tough guy. Mm -hmm. Right, because that's that's a huge part of that mm -hmm. lifestyle. Yeah, and you know, I, I was proud of myself in not being sneaky or sleazy, the way right. Because if I wasn't that, then I'm not that bad. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. But check this out. Listen to this. Now, how messed up is this belief system? How messed up is this way of thinking? I thought that it was better for me to come in, put a gun in your face, and take all your stuff. Than it was for me to sit beside you and slip fifty bucks into your pocket. Whatever you know. Wow. <laughs> How messed up is that belief system? Yeah. I thought that it was more solid and more, you know, that manly. It was more manly yeah. to come in and say, "Give me your shit. I'm taking everything to your face with a weapon." Than it would be the, you know, sneaky. You have more integrity doing that. Right? Then you did. Oh, wow. Isn't that? But, that's, but that's the belief system wow. that is created in these systems, in, in the prison system and all that stuff. That's how the belief system gets so warped. Oh. 
right? Yeah. And I only recognized that a couple months ago, and I was like, I thought it was better to put a gun in somebody's face than yeah. to steal 50 bucks out of their wallet. How messed up is that? I'm pretty sure they would have given you the 50 dollars. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm like, how messed what? up That's is crazy. that? Right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, you aren't strong enough, and then if you're if you're in prison, I'm sure you're seeing people that were the the thief that pulled out of people's yeah. pockets. And you're like, oh, yeah. you're nothing, sweet. You're a joke. Right? Yeah, right. You know what I mean? yeah, yeah. You're a joke. You're, you're, you're sneaking, sneaking, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. But that's that oh, oh. belief system. See, that's wow. that twisted mm. belief system that doesn't fit out here. Yeah. yeah. But you're forced to live that way in there. You have to, or you become a victim mm. entirely, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so you 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 adapt and. I mean, human beings adapt to any environment. We it's know true. that, mm -hmm. right? We yep. will. We'll adapt to survive, mm -hmm. yep. right? Yep. And that's the thing. You you adapt to that belief system on the inside. And then you come out here and it doesn't fit. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're like a fish out of water. Mm -hmm. So where do you go? Yeah. Right back to the people that accept mm -hmm. that belief system. Yeah. Okay. Right? And then... Um, you got to be on top of it every day. You do, you right? Be, but yeah. it gets easier and easier, you know, mm -hmm. because I... I but the things that I'm doing today, so what I've done is I realized a long time ago that, like, when I first started to want to change, and this was, you know, early 2000s, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it took a long time before mm -hmm. I actually made a lot of stumbles mm -hmm. through that trail, a lot, mm -hmm. and I went back over in the other trail a few times, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I kept coming back, and I yeah. kept coming back, right? And um, it was just this, like, crazy I don't know it was it, the stumbling through it it was like one of the big things that I learned was because I always thought that I had to hide everything I always thought that I had to hide my past I can't oh, tell shame. people I'm in jail you know what I mean I can't tell people that I'm in prison mm. to hold it against me the stigma around mm. I can't tell people that I was an IV drug user don't think the worst of me, you know what I mean? Like, I gotta hide all these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I come to the recognition that I can use these as an assets, yeah. right? I can use my past as an asset. I can use it to help others. And that's when I started to believe that everything happened to me for a reason. Mm -hmm. All these things that happened through my life was to give me the ability to be able to understand, to be able to connect. Mm -hmm. To be able to, to to be there with different people that are struggling with different things, mm -hmm. and I can hold doors open for them, mm -hmm. you know, and give them that little bit of extra hope mm -hmm. in their lives, mm -hmm. you know, and and uh, and I believe that wholeheartedly today, and and I think that's what I was talking about earlier. I should have been dead years ago, but there was a reason for that. Yeah, you know, there yes, was a reason yes, that yes, that yes. you know there was a purpose to. Yeah. My mother always used to say that to me. God, I love her, boy. Okay. She used to say it to me all the time when I was out there doing all that stuff. And she'd be like, God's got a plan for you. Yeah. God's got a plan for you, Peter. He yeah. does. You don't see it. But he's got a plan for you. Yeah. Right? And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, you got a plan, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, That's awesome. But she yeah. used to tell it to me all the time. Yeah. And, 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 she, uh, and you live with her right now. She's yeah, she's, yeah, she's down. Yeah, she's down the That's first awesome. level there. Yeah, yeah. so I wanted to. You know, they're getting up there in age, and, yeah. and you know, I wanted yeah. to keep them close. And, That's right. That's you know, nice. they, I mean, they did so she much. She must for be me. so proud of you now, too, oh, right? Like peacock, yeah. Oh, she not would be. I'd be proud of you. Yeah, yeah that was Not amazing. watching you rob and bank somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's now she's watching you help others on the news, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah so. But she was, yeah. she was, uh, 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 I'll just <laughs> sort of just. So, you know, she she believes in Jesus Christ and goes to church, and mm -hmm. she has yeah. Christianity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's got a really good grip on it, and it's really, you know, taken a good, uh, yeah. has, has a lot of good in her life. And and so she's going to church. And um, so one day they were there talking about something, and they were talking about one of the guys um, that she went to church with worked in crashes, worked in one of the prisons, and he was mm -hmm. one of the higher-ups or something. I forget what section mm -hmm. he worked in. Anyway, so they were there talking about crashes, and she said, Oh, my son goes does something. He said, "Oh, what's your son's name?" He said, "He said Peter Brown." And he goes, "Oh, I heard about him." And blah blah blah. Oh, he yeah. said, so he's involved with this and doing this." Oh, yeah. She was just she beaming. Been, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah.